This is a Middle Loop Quick Class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is a Quick Class by request. Today's Quick Class, a complete guide to expanding the memory of your DJI drone. I can't tell you how many times people have reached out because they've had difficulty expanding the memory of their DJI drone. They put in a micro SD card, record a flight, and when they get home, there's nothing on the card. Well, today we'll go through it, start to finish, hopefully solving any problems you might be having. We'll start out with an introduction, picking the right card, formatting it, and some other information you might find useful. Next, we'll go over settings. We'll show what you need to change. Then we'll get into transferring the files to your computer. We'll show where on the memory card you'll find the video and photo files. And finally, some information specific to recording video in ProRes. Before we get started, if you're new to our channel, we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. And of course, if you find this video useful, please tap that like button so others can find it easily too. All right, let's get started. With today's drones being capable of taking high resolution photos and videos, they can eat up internal memory in no time. That's assuming your drone has internal memory. The Mini 2, for example, does not. Most have some, but usually not enough, especially if you plan on shooting 4K video. So, expanding the memory of your drone might be important to you. Incidentally, if you're looking to expand the memory of your controller, we have a separate video for the RC Pro controller. We'll provide a link to that video at the end of this video in the description. DJI drones use micro SD cards, and depending on which drone you have, the list of compatible cards varies. The best place to find the current list of recommended cards for your drone is by looking in the spec sheet provided by DJI. For your convenience, we've created a consolidated list for many of the DJI drones. The link that just popped up above will take you to that list, and we've also provided that link in the description. What about formatting the card? Most cards come formatted out of the box. Even so, we always recommend formatting the card when it's new. For that matter, our recommendation is to format it anytime you move it from one device to another. It only takes a couple of seconds and it ensures that it's in the proper format for the device that you'll be using. We've heard from a variety of people that they could not write to a memory card in their drone until after it's been formatted. And they didn't know it didn't work until they got home and tried to find the files on the card. Now I'm sure it goes without saying that formatting the card will delete any data that's on it. So be sure to back up or copy anything that you want to keep before formatting it. To format the micro SD card, with the drone off, insert the card. Then turn both the drone and controller on, and once they're talking to each other, open the DJI Fly app if it didn't automatically open. Next, tap the three dots in the upper right. If not already on the camera tab, tap on it and scroll all the way down to the storage section near the bottom. As you can see, this drone, which is the Mavic 3 Cine, has both internal storage and it has an external micro SD card installed. This is a good place to go to check on how much internal and external memory you have on your drone and how much is available. The card that we've installed is 128 gigabytes. As you can see, formatted, it yields about 119 gigs total, and it currently has just over 109 gigs available. Have you ever wondered why the total capacity of the card or disk is always smaller than its size? Like in this example, why is there only 119 gigs of usable space on a 128 gig card? Well, to be brief, it mostly comes down to marketing. Now there is a little loss due to space set aside for the file system itself, but that doesn't take up much room. Mostly the difference is because card manufacturers measure the size based on the decimal system and operating systems like a computer or in this case the drone measure using binary. It's the same amount of space just counted on a different base system and the marketing department of these card manufacturers feel that 128 gigs sounds a lot better than 119. Anyway, that's a discussion for another time. To format the card, tap Format. By default, Internal storage is selected to be formatted. Be very careful. This is your only opportunity to cancel, and there are no other warnings beyond this. So tap on SD card, and then tap Format. And there it goes, formatting the SD card. Like I said, it doesn't take hardly any time at all, and now the card has been formatted. 
which on this drone and with this card took about six seconds. And now you can see where before we had 109 gigs available, now we have 119. There's only one setting that needs to be changed so that the drone records to the external SD card. And that's right here. Mine is currently set to record to internal storage. You can tell which one is selected by the white background. To set it to external storage, tap on the SD card. And that's it. Photos and videos will now be recorded on the card. Once selected, the drone will remember this setting, even if you cycle the power. However, if you remove the card and don't put it back in, when you power on the drone, you'll get a message like this, and it will revert back to internal storage. Most people probably remove the card from the drone and insert it into some sort of card reader to transfer the files. If that's your preferred method, just remember to stop recording and shut down the drone normally before physically removing the card. There is no software function in the controller to dismount or eject the card before removing it from the drone. Shutting down the drone normally is the best way to make sure all files are closed. To physically remove it, most drones have a spring release, meaning you push it in and release, and the spring ejects it enough so that you can grab the card. While we're on the subject, we've heard a number of people have had difficulty removing their micro SD card. On some drones, for example, the line of Mavic 3 drones, removing the battery gives better access to the card slot and can make it easier to remove the card. If you are using a card reader to transfer your videos and photos, we'll show you where to locate those files on the card shortly. We're not big fans of continually moving the SD card from one device to another. There's far too much risk of damaging the card or losing it or forgetting to put it back in and not having one with you when you need it. We prefer leaving it in the drone and using a different method to transfer the files from it. Like in this case, wireless. In January of 2022, DJI introduced Quick Transfer. This method uses Wi-Fi to transfer the images and videos wirelessly straight from the drone to a mobile device. And as the name implies, it's pretty quick. The only problem with Quick Transfer is not all DJI drones support it, especially older drones. It's also pretty much limited to transferring to just mobile devices, not computers. But if you're interested in using Quick Transfer, we have another video that covers it and we provided a link in the description that gets you right to the relevant section of that video. At Middle Loop, our preferred method of transferring files to a computer is via the USB port. This goes for both PCs as well as Macs, although the method does vary slightly. For PCs, connect the drone to the PC before powering on the drone. But with the Mac, we find it works better to turn on the drone before plugging the USB cable into it. With either a PC or Mac, once connected, both the internal drive of the drone and the external SD card will be accessible via the computer's file manager, just like if you had inserted a USB memory stick. So let's take a look. Here we have a Mavic 3 Cine plugged into a Mac and we've opened two Finder windows. Finder is Apple's out-of-the-box file manager. Since this drone has both internal storage and an external SD card installed, they both show up as separate volumes. On a PC, it's similar. Both show up with their own drive letter. In this example, SSD is the internal storage, and SD card is, well, you guessed it, the external SD card. These names may vary depending on which drone you've plugged in. The good news is the folder structure of the internal drive and the SD card should be identical to each other. So, finding these files will be the same regardless of whether you're writing to internal or external storage. Let's drill into the SD card. From the root directory, videos and photos will be found under DCIM and then 100 media. Now, of course, you can copy and paste using a single window, but I prefer having a second finder window open so I can drag and drop the files that I want. Just a quick note about memory cards and ProRes. For those who don't know, ProRes is a video coding format developed by Apple and it's only available on a handful of DJI drones. ProRes uses a ton of memory and it requires extremely fast write speeds, which is why you only find it on drones like the Mavic 3 Cine and the Mavic 3 Pro Cine, which both have a massive internal one terabyte solid state drive capable of handling the extreme requirements. If you are recording in ProRes, you will not be able to use an external SD card. They just can't handle the write speeds needed. In fact, if you have your drone set to record to the SD card, 
and you try to select ProRes as your coding format, you'll get this message with the option to switch it back to the internal solid state disk. So that does it for this quick class. We hope you found it useful. And here are those links that we mentioned throughout the video. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying.